So what you explain and from this conversation, ladies and gentlemen, is remind me a similarity like 2000 years ago. So we have to have a break, but while we have a break, I want to remind me something that Tofan can show us. Tofan, the first lingan, uh, because the situation is similar. You might think that the reason many men and a good deal of women love Gladiator is because of the 15-year-old in them. It's full of gore, action, and spectacle. But that's not the reason I think people love this movie and watch it again and again over the years. They love it because it tells a compelling story about the kind of man men want to be and women want to be with. The ideal man. Gladiator is about how the ideal man acts when confronted with the sometimes brutal and malevolent nature of our world. The name of the ideal man in Gladiator is Maximus. That's a fitting name because he's man at the maximum. He's not just one of the classical archetypes of manhood, such as the king, the warrior, the magician, or the lover. He is a very satisfying combination of all the manly archetypes. In the opening act of the movie, we're presented with what happens to a man who lives life properly. We find Maximus on the tide of a great battle, and even more impressive than the ordered and capable army he commands is the moving way in which his men respect him. It's clear he has won his position through his competence. He's not just a technician expert that gives orders on the sidelines. Maximus plays the game at the highest level and rides at the head of his men into the arena. Maximus is the epitome of a gentleman. You cannot be a gentle man without being a man first. Someone who can rip off heads in power and fury. But a gentleman then restrains that power to gentleness in order to respect his elders, women, children, and society. What Maximus touches turns to gold. The battle is won, and Maximus is the great man. They honor you, Caesar. They for you, Maximus. They honor you. And the more we look, the more we find he's the great man because the way he lives is great. He doesn't want to be on the battlefield shedding blood. Back to barracks, General. Or to Rome. Home. The wife, the son, the harvest. Yet he is on the battlefield because he believes in higher ideals and he lives a life of sacrifice to those ideals. He sacrifices to the political ideal, even in a world where the political ideal has become corrupted in reality. I've seen much of the rest of the world. It is brutal and cruel and dark. Rome is the light. Yet you have never been there. You have not seen what it has become. He sacrifices to the ideal of the home and the family. He sacrifices to the transcendent, the higher, and yet uncomprehended forces at play in the world, that he has the humility to honor. Whisper to them I live only to hold them again. Ancestors, I honor you. I will try to live with the dignity you have taught me. What he does, he does in service and duty to these ideals, and he lets everything else fall as it may. He is not interested in manipulating the world to his preferred outcome. He sacrifices the present to what is right and lets the future consequences follow with the faith that the future will be the best it can possibly be if he partners with and sacrifices to life in this way. And onto this type of man spills the favor of existence. Men want to be this kind of man. Women want to be with this kind of man. When the emperor, the god of the Roman Empire, needs a successor who will turn a corrupted state back to its ideal, he turns to Maximus. There is one more duty that I ask of you before you go home. What would you have me do, Caesar? I want you to become the protector of Rome after I die. I will empower you to one end alone. 
to give power back to the people of Rome and end the corruption that has crippled it. Would you accept this great honor that I have offered you? With all my heart, no. Maximus, that is why it must be you. And what of Commodus, the emperor's real son? The emperor cannot favor Commodus. Commodus is not a moral man. You have known that since you were young. Commodus cannot rule. He must not rule. Commodus and Maximus are not brothers by blood, but the story emphasizes their symbolic brotherhood. Rome salutes you, and I embrace you as a brother. While Maximus sacrifices, and his sacrifices bring him the favor of God and life, Commodus also sacrifices. Congratulations. I shall sacrifice a hundred bulls to honor your triumph. Save the bulls. Honor Maximus. He won the battle. But Commodus' sacrifices are not of the same quality, and hence do not have the same results as Maximus's. Commodus yearns for the favor of his father, and the same kind of favor which life has shown to his brother Maximus. In essence, even Commodus wants to be Maximus. So much for the glory of Rome. But Commodus is blinded to the ways in which Maximus had to partner with life and sacrifice to life in order to curry its favor. Commodus believes that life can be manipulated according to his own terms, and he's willing to use any means to gain his ends. I would put to the whole world if you would only love me. This sort of manipulation is demonstrated throughout the movie through his relationship with his sister Lucilla, who he doesn't just love as a sister, but with whom he thinks he can twist the rules of affection and make her a sexual partner as well. Stay with me tonight. You know, you know. Wow. So, these questions I will ask not to Ole, but to Mari and to Farah, because you are a woman. He said that this movie, a man with principle, has to sacrifice. Right? And he has to play the game of the highest of uncomprehended forces, but he has to spill the spirit of existence. So when Ole tell the story, came to my mind, he's endangering not himself, but also the family, the wife. And my questions, why his wife wanted to do that? And you are two women, because in the movie, it was answered, Men want to live like this man, and women want to live with this kind of man. So I ask you, to both of you, do you think only showing that quality, and we have no doubt why the wife wants to stay with him. So the movie gives a res resemblance of that. What do you think, Farah? You are younger, right, than Mary. Then I'll let Mary have to answer. <laughs> Okay. We're talking yeah. about you, Olena. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a hard question. <laughs> Since, well, I've been wanting to live a quiet and peaceful life since, <laughs> since I was much younger. <laughs> but then I think after um, I... I found some truths in this world and I come to a realization that I also want to unveil everything as well. So I think as long as we have the same value as a gladiator, as for me, I think, <laughs> as for me, I will gladly sacrifice myself as well. No, I don't ask you want to sacrifice. Do you want to live with this kind of man? Oh. In danger in your life. <laughs> well, if if we have the same value, it's it's actually hard. Yes, it's it's hard. But um, if we have the same value, then sure. So not because of a uh, blindly love, love blindly, and yeah? not because of that. 
not because, no. of, because of value, right? Because of the value, yes. So, Mario, what do you think? You're much more uh, experienced in this life. Well, it's and easy for me. You may be the man like that, you know. <laughs> yes, it's easy for me. It's unfair, but it's uh, sorry. I, I, yes, I, I am fortunate to have lived with a man who holds the truth as much as he know what the truth is of what he believes the truth is, and and he he's in in an academic term. Uh, he is a person who follow the ontology, but not utilitarian. Okay. you know philosophy of life so if if one is the ontologist it means that one would be fine and comfortable to be living in a prison as you know as you know as as Ole mentioned about but if one follows utilitarian philosophy of life then they would easily forget what the truth is but then pursue what you know, whatever policies, or whatever acts can be perceived by popular mass to benefit them. So if we, you know, if you think about where, how and where we live now in, in a modern political system, most political actors I know are utilitarian. So to answer your question, Richard, I, I have been fortunate to, to have lived with a husband who is the ontologist, who take risks, and who holds the truth as much as he can, or what he believes is the truth. Yeah, later I want to only answer that, but what a crazy woman want to live with this kind of man. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I tell you, it's, it's not easy. It is not easy. Yeah, I would like and, to, uh, the woman, would the woman behind that, uh, Oli? Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, it's yes, the I, courage. How, how, how was, what's the story? Is a Farah says what value, you know, but okay, like the situation is married a little bit different. But 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 with you, you have no money, you have to struggle, they want to kill you, mm -hmm. they they do everything. The world is against you and she stays with you. So what power she has then? You have to learn from her. Did you you learn from her? Sorry? Did you learn from her? Something? Yeah. Yeah. The perseverance. So I I learned a lot because I'm I uh, I used to be scared of kids. I used to not be very good at relationships, and uh, and she sort of showed me that even though if you that you can have problems in a relationship, that it doesn't mean that it's over just because the problems can be really serious. Uh, she has really showed me, you know, persistence and uh, that she doesn't give up. She is a strong lady. And uh, we have affected each other in mostly positive ways, both of us. And so she has also stepped forward now. She is, uh, she's she's got a, a website called Awake and Unite. And uh, she has a newsletter she sends out. It's, um, it's, it's really an interesting newsletter, I think, myself. So please check it out. But also my daughter and her has started a podcast called Who Knows, where daughter and mother talks about everything from you name it uh, anything the the who knows podcast because it is like who knows who knows 